And so to the big one, to the current World Constructors Champions, Mercedes. Uh, and I say that because in winning that Constructors Championship, they have, of course, then incurred a penalty, which would have affected their wind tunnel time and their CFD time as well. That's a penalty, of course, that they, everybody knew going in they would have to carry. But it isn't a great thing when there's brand new regulations, a whole new Formula One to approach. But nobody better to look at the new car now, the Mercedes W13. Craig Scarborough, over to you. Thank you, Peter. Well, it was uh, the kind of the most ex uh, anticipated launch, I guess you could say. Uh, Red Bull have been obviously very cagey with theirs. Mercedes incredibly open. The car in the studio was the car they literally wheeled out at the test. It had the car we see behind us in this mega video, us, yeah. All of the sensors and the bits and pieces were actually on that. So we know that it's a running car. Yes, yes, stuff they're going to be hiding, but we gave us a chance to have a proper look at what we'll probably see throughout the first of that Barcelona shakedown test. And yeah, the key thing here really with this is the side pods. Now, we talk about that a lot this stage of the season. It's not that the side pods are going to give you a huge amount of performance, but they're one of those areas that we can look at that won't change a lot and really kind of give you that distinct feeling for each different car. And Mercedes, again, are very different from everybody else. Well, this is something that we're seeing across the board, isn't it? Every yeah. car looks to be kind of different, dare I say it. I think some people out there predicting they'd all look the same going into these new regulations, but that is not the case. That's not the case. Up until two weeks ago, I would still get everyone going, well, the cars all look the same as the <laughs> spec series, and then bang, you know, a few weeks later, yeah. it's like, well, God, they're all so different. It's amazing. It's fantastic. And it is good. Yeah. And I think the cars will still retain quite a lot of individuality going through these next few seasons. So I don't think we're all going to suddenly converge in cars that look very, very similar. Well, I think you predicted the louvers on top of the pods before anybody else, and that definitely is a reality now. But what are we seeing on the Mercedes there? We've got some panels, I think, probably. Uh, this yeah. isn't the final rendition, correct? Yeah, so this is actually quite different. In some respects, people have looked at this and said it looks much like last year's car. It's like a development, and it really isn't because the whole packaging is quite different. So the side pod fronts have been pushed right forwards into the limit of the regulatory box that you're allowed. And that's why you get these quite square inlets at the front. Mm. But Mercedes have kind of designed that area with a bit more flair than other teams. They've kind of got a crease along the top edge and they've been quite cheeky with the regulations. You're allowed to have two mirror mounts uh, for each of your mirror pods. And as you can see, they're sweeping out. It, these are actually on the top of the side pods are actually the, the wing mirror mounts. Now, clearly, without such a huge vein going along the top of the side pod in a really critical area. I'm sure the mirrors would shake <laughs> yeah, unbelievably and no one could see what was behind them, but it's all a case of stretch of the regulations. And then the side pods cut in really quickly, much like they have done for the past few seasons. So that's nothing entirely new. Uh, quite a big undercut to get that lateral airflow pushing out sideways at the front of the car. And then it all comes in really, really tightly again, as we've seen with Mercedes in the past. But again, as we've seen with the other cars is they don't just bring that coke bottle area quite low at the back of the car they're actually trying to bring it all upwards and exit above the beam wing and what we call that cannon exit some of the designers like to call it a tulip exit i think cannon sounds a bit more uh, exciting <laughs> and so is it fair to say then that that a lot of their building blocks their experience has, has gone into just packaging at the rear end what you've just described exactly. making that happen it's just physically. trying to get that all packaged yeah. and it all in quite neatly a lot of people have actually said that the back of the car is fat because you don't see those blisters around the engine anymore but that's because you're actually ducting air in that area as well as mercedes have tidied that area of the engine up as well so all of that's just working very well again nothing kind of spectacular radical innovative going on but just very good packaging that just works as a complete package and that's probably going to be the underlying statement about this new regulation is it not it's very exactly. very difficult to be truly radical truly different but there's going to be the tiny details in the packaging as we said but um yeah now let's talk a little bit more about the suspension front suspension rear suspension what are you seeing there on um the it's the suspension is quite conventional uh, from what we can see so far um at the front it's push rod so nothing exciting going on there in comparison to uh, red bull and mclaren at the back it's still pull rod and mercedes have had to repackage this slightly now they've still got their kind of reversed lower wishbone so you get the drive shaft of the track rod first and then that rear leg of the wishbone goes backwards 
onto the rear crash structure, which they've had for the past few years, mm -hmm. and just allows you to get that downwash through that area of the Coke bottle to work the diffuser so much better. Um, they've also had to move all the springs and dampers further forwards, again, because of the gearbox changes. The gearbox is now pulled back in the wheelbase, almost between the rear wheels, and that's where they used to have the springs and dampers. They've had to move that forwards. What we really want to see is what do these springs and dampers actually look like? Because if you remember, Mercedes, uh, for the past 10 or more years, have been one of the innovators with suspension, with Frick and the Link suspension, then the gas springs and all the other clever stuff that's been going on. So they've had a lot to lose here. But equally, they are the team that have you know, had a handle on suspension mm. so well. So even if some of those tricks have been taken away, they clearly know what you want to do with the suspension. The engineer that actually highlighted all this stuff for uh, Mercedes at first, it was initially at Renault, hasn't moved on uh, many years since. So, you know, it's not mm. that they have, you know, relying on that one person, but now, you know, their suspension team have got, you know, as all of them have got quite a bit to tackle. Uh, the front suspension really it's all there to design work to work with that front wing and that new shape nose yeah give us a feel though for what the suspension designer is trying to the problems he's trying to cure because the car is basically hard and low correct yes. so what they, are they trying to get as much suspension movement as they can within the the actual stiffness that they've got to run or do you think they're trying to find ways of not running as stiff as perhaps other cars. There's a balance between the suspension and the aero guys, and the, you, know, you kind of meet mm. at a compromise somewhere at the middle. So the cars are going to run very flat now. So this whole question of rake, high, low, different ride heights, that's really all kind of gone now. They're going to want the car as low as possible, which means that you've got to get really fine control, particularly as that car starts to squash down with aero or under braking or acceleration. And that then last few millimetres of movement really needs to be controlled. And that's one of the things that the gas okay. spring, particularly at the front of the Mercedes yeah. over the past few years, have been so good at. Uh, equally, some of the suspension geometry tricks have been taken away as well. At the back, you're really trying to keep things stable. So I think, certainly at first, I don't think we're going to see that kind of squashing rear suspension that we saw, that collapsing uh, element that we saw for the past few years because it, you know the cars are so flat there's no space to do that anymore so the whole kind of paradigm what we're trying to do is change so it is just trying to very finely control very small amounts of movement which is which is very difficult a few comments coming through from some of the drivers about how different the cars in general generically feel under braking particularly from high speed now yes well it will do so i don't think these cars will have any more or less mechanical grip i think like the peak amount of grip available probably won't change massively what will change is the consistency and the ability for the suspension you know to be compliant over different situations whether it's you know pitch roll mm. or you know hitting bumps and curbs so i think if a driver is going into a corner and you know one of the wheels hits a bump whereas before you know the inerter would pick that up and damp that out and all of the other clever stuff now you haven't got those tricks so you know if you are going to get something upsetting the balance of the car going at any point through a corner it's going to have a bigger impact so it's kind of a bit more peaky in terms of performance and so the teams will want to try and work that out both with suspension but equally with the aero as well and what about tire temperatures less heat going into the tire warmers now for 2022 yep. what sort of impact is that going to have on the way obviously out of the pits it's going to be a drama but nonetheless in the way you tune the car with tire temperatures it's going to be more difficult right it's going to be more difficult it's going to be a good few years before they completely dial out the tire warmers so for mm. this year i don't think there's going to be a big issue with the tire warmers but you have a bigger tire which takes more time to warm up particularly we're talking about the fronts here yeah. the rears are quite easy to warm up you know you can just kind of spin the spin the tires and they very mm. soon build up heat um, but then you have the problem is that teams used to manage the heat from the brakes going into the wheels into the tires to manage mm. particularly front brake temperature but equally at the back but in the opposite direction yeah um, the tricks for that have been taken away from them in, in a lot of respects you can't blow the hot air from the brakes out into the wheel now always to kind of go back out the brake ducts but you what you've got to then think is well what would the teams do to get heat from the brakes back into those front tires on those days that you need it so you have this near spec brake drum that can't have any holes in it 
But the rules are very simple uh, for the brake drum. You've just got a kind of a geometry, but it doesn't say anything about materials. So you could put um, heat reflective coating on it, for example, to stop the heat from the brakes getting into the wheel, particularly at the rear. We'll see lots of that silver reflective um, mm. coatings on there. At the front, you'd want to do the opposite. So maybe you would have thinner carbon fiber. Maybe you're going to 3D print <laughs> some titanium brake drums that would really transfer the heat out from the brakes into the There's a little area here for teams to play with. And I think it's a little bit of a blind spot in the regulations at this stage. So we'll just have to watch and see how that progresses. Front wing, is there anything to be said about the front wing on the Mercedes? It is quite interesting. I mean, this is almost a classic, what for me would be a 2022 front wing. So with the front wing, you're only trying to balance the car with what the downforce that you get from the underbody and the rear wing. Mm. Um, but what you don't want to do is to have a really powerful front wing or the, creating its downforce in the wrong area that it starves the underfloor of flow. So what Mercedes have done, have done the, the sensible thing is to keep the middle of the, the nose quite flat, the wing quite flat, but then build the wing up in those mid spans before going really low, which is why you get these such large looking end plates on the end of it, mm. really low at the end to try and wind down the thing. So all the load is in the midpoint of the wing. And that means that it's robbing air effectively from the brake ducts and that will then get thrown out around the back of the car. So it's quite a clever way of doing things. Um, they've gone for a long nose, which is interesting. Other teams, as we know, have had this kind of hanging main plane where the nose is a little bit shorter and the front element of the wing sits below to kind of straighten the airflow to the underfloor. Uh, they haven't gone that way. I'm sure that they could flip between uh, different options uh, through the year if they wanted to, um, even if it required a crash test. But I'm sure they've probably thought about this already and that front section is really just bodywork rather than crash structure. So, so that's quite clever. So to sum up, Scarbs, does this look to you like a car that's been crimped a little bit with, obviously with the wind tunnel testing time and also the budget cap reduction? Does that look like that sort of car to you or does it look like the car that new mercedes should be doing anyway regardless of budget regardless of testing well, facilities i mean if we take this as this is you know, their first stab of where they are and we're not going to see radical changes i would say that they've you know we know that they're very very fast they don't have to pull everything out in order to make loads of extra performance so i think this is kind of the right approach for them is you know not it's by no means conservative but it's not you know, being risky with, with things. I think Red Bull, as we've seen, is a bit more of a uh, risky car with some of the things that they've got going on with that car. Yeah, and we'll talk about Red so Bull. We'll talk about Red Bull when we look at the new Alpha Tori. Mm. Just on that point. So yes, yeah, so I think this is. I think they've pitched this quite right that they've not, you know, gone too far one direction or another. So, in what areas would you, again to sum up, would you say it's not conservative? Um, well, the area really is that, that side pods uh, and to an extent the, the, the what they call the throat, this ramp section that, that starts the underfloor tunnels. Mm. They've played about with that in ways that other teams haven't. It's quite developed. Um, I think there's still some meat on the bone for them to develop those areas. Um, but I, I think that's probably the key area that they're playing with. So they really have kind of done everything right at this stage. Verdict on the uh, return to the Silver Arrows look, the new livery? I need to see it a bit more uh, in the proper sunshine. This is Silverstone <laughs> in uh, the, mid, the there, middle of our sure. worst storm we've had in you know, 20 years. I thought the colour looks a bit flat, to be honest. Yeah. The grey looks a bit flat. It looks, I mean, it looks grey, not silver to me. But, you know, that really isn't my area of expertise. Yeah. Interesting to see it nonetheless.